Hey guys, WQ here. I've been speedrunning this game since April 2013, and I've learned a lot of secrets, tips, and tricks over the years that got me so good at speedrunning this game, and I'm going to show you guys all of them right now. The most basic door mechanic is don't hold up or left out of these doors. So just notice how slow that is. It's such a ridiculous time loss. 530. 520 the nine frame time loss is insane and it's so easy to notice and I think if you've been playing this game for like a week or two you'll like okay I gotta stop doing that so just hold up and then left now there are more advanced doors um this is actually one of them where you don't want to hold diagonal out of the store you want to hold up and then left but um most doors you can just hold diagonal out of so this one is called door lag and this really matters and when you walk into a door and you're not perfectly aligned um, you'll nudge into the door and you lose a few frames on that, but it's not that big of a deal. If you hold diagonal on the other hand and then go into the door, you, there's something called door lag, which is extra lag lost. And if you notice, holding diagonal slows down right to the doorway. Really slows down the doorway. If I just hold down and then right, it doesn't create that door lag. And then I'm going to show you the difference. 7631 with the lag, 7627 without the lag. Four frames of lag, five frames of lag. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it actually is a lot. And over the whole run, it really adds up. And it's super easy to just not hold diagonal on any of these doors. So here's another room where you kill this guy. You want to hold the right until you hit the doorway entrance and then pull it up. It's very easy because after throwing the pot down, you're going to hold diagonal anyway. It's very easy to continue holding diagonal until the door entrance, but you lose a lot of time. And I'll show you a simple test. 1241, 1242, 1246, 1241. It is five frame time loss um, everywhere. Every single door really adds up and you lose a lot of time. And even in this next screen, you see another simple case where if you go into this door diagonally right at the end, 1500, 1504, and it's, you know, usually you'll press diagonal earlier. This is why you want to press diagonal pretty early here so that you don't lag on this right here when you're pressing diagonal. So you want to do this pretty early. So there's this thing called bastard doors, and there are a handful of doors in the game that if you open them and then you exit the door holding a diagonal, you actually lose um, frames, and a lot of these doors actually change how the rooms are played, and this is really interesting, and this is one of these doors that actually change, completely changes how the game... Now, I just learned this today, it's really interesting, um, it only happens when you open a door. So if I open the door, now this room and the next room have um, bastard lag. So notice I'm just exiting it normally. But if I exit with a diagonal, I kind of lag a little bit. Right. So if I leave either one of these rooms, it, this door won't have that condition anymore. That doesn't really matter for a speed run, but it is pretty interesting, especially if you try to practice, because a lot of um, screens you'll go back into and the door's already open, and so you won't see the bastard lag, and so that might throw you off, but um, we should be getting it here. So yeah, if you hold diagonal here and you get bastard lag, this blue guy can actually walk into you. If you hold di diagonal down right out of the door, I got a 342. It wasn't very clean. Let's keep holding diagonal and see what I get. 340. One trial where I'm not holding diagonal. 336, so I, that saves about four frames, and there's only about, I think, 12 rooms in the game, maybe eight rooms, where this has happened. I'll just run through them. Desert Popo's one, right, so this is a room, and I actually don't have the bastard lag on this room because I didn't open the key door, so I can hold diagonal, and it's fine, but normally you can't. But um, yeah, this room is actually very different if you get the bastard lag because you're actually too slow, and then a lot of times that far right popo, um, you can't slash him or you can't dash him properly. So this room is really important. Hold right until you get out of the doorway, and then hit diagonal. Um, and then this room is, is a very difficult room, but I'm a, 
Make sure you're not holding diagonal in the doorway. Um, in the in the doorway, hold out, hold out until you hit right here, and then hit diagonal. Another uh, another room is an Agamemnon's tower. So right after Dark Maze, you enter this dark room. These two spear guards are coming at you, and you have to make a very tight turn. And if you make that turn, you're completely fine. I'll, I'll show you how to do it properly. So if you make that turn right there, you'll never get hit, which is good. But if you exit this doorway holding a diagonal, that's not good. And I'm, I'm not 100% on this, but across all the RNGs in this game, I, I you might be get you might get hit sometimes if you go slow. I'm, I'm pretty sure sometimes you will get hit there if you still make that turn and just hold out until you get out of the doorway and then turn. The another thing though, if you walk too far out of the doorway, um, and then you then you hit diagonal, these guys can't hit you also. Very they're very random. And there are specific movements. So it's it's the same actually in um, right before Mothula. So again, I don't have the bastard door due to the um, safe state, but this is another bastard door where you wanna walk all the way out of the door and then hit diagonal. And this one's interesting because if you do this room optimally, you can get hit by the spike. And it's, I intentionally slow myself down. So I'll walk about right here and then I hit diagonal so I don't get hit by the spike. But if you do this room optimally and right here you hit diagonal, you can get hit by the spike. It's pretty rare, but it does happen. Uh, but if you hold diagonal out of the door, you'll never get hit by it. And so a lot of times people will never get hit by the spike. And then they're like, hey, this if I, hold, if I don't hold diagonal out of the door, I'm actually faster. And so then they stop doing that. And then they get hit by the spike and then they lose a run to Mafiola. They're panicking. Um, it does happen, be wary of that. So if you do start to hold out out of this door, either go really far out or just do it early to slow yourself down a little bit. And there I got hit there, but I don't think that one counted. Um, another interesting bastard door actually is Palace of Darkness, right before Turtle Room. And this one is actually completely trivial because you never actually, um, you would never hold diagonal off the door anyway. So this is a bastard door, but it doesn't really matter. But actually it does matter because if you pump out of this door, it still applies to the bastard condition. So you would anti-pump every time you pump. So um, don't pump, hold left out of here and don't pump out of this door and then just dash down. And that's actually optimal. It's actually optimal. Another um, bastard door screen is actually this screen right here. And again, I'm not getting the condition right now because of the safe state, but um, this one barely affects anything. Basically, don't pump out of this doorway. Go to about right here and then just hit diagonal. So you get a clean entrance in this door. You can cut it early um, and hit diagonal right here, but you kind of land right in front of the door. So you, you, you either have to pump on your way out um, or hit down and then hit left, right which I find both of those really awkward. So what I do is I just hit diagonal right here and then get a clean door entrance. Not a super significant one, fortunately. This room is also a bastard door. I remember in my career, there's supposed to be a blue horse head in here that walks towards you. I remember getting hit by him and you know using the bastard door condition and getting hit by him um, because you walk out slower, you get there slower, so he has more time to come, to come at you. but. I was testing it right now and I never got hit. If you have kind of bad movement um, or you make a little air, that can definitely happen. So this is another screen. It's pretty important to walk all the way out outside the door then hit up. Um, actually, don't hit diagonal here. Don't go diagonal here too because of this horse head. The last bastard door is actually um, this next screen. So once you open this door, um, this room actually has a bastard condition and this one's kind of tricky because it's really easy to hold up and right out of this door to get around the switch but if you don't have that option it gets a little bit harder um, if you go too far out like right right out here you get stuck on the switch it's really annoying um, and going up and around is really awkward so this one you kind of have to watch out and especially if you're a newer player it's really easy to hold diagonal here but it does lose time that's how to optimally do that again very it's very straightforward Get out of the doorway, hold up and out. Those are all the bastard doors that I know of. I'm pretty sure that's the entirety of them in the game. There might be, there's a bunch of random ones in rooms you don't see. Um, I know if you play randomizer, you might see that. The thing is most of um, most of these rooms, you lose a few frames in. 
it doesn't affect the room, and if you can't notice the lag, you're a very new player, it's probably not going to bother you. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. But um, if you're trying to speedrun this game, especially speedrun at a high level, uh, these, these frames are really important, and also how the rooms change is really important too. Um, affecting muscle memory is extremely important, so make sure that you're aware of this and can practice in the future. So there's another type of lag in this game called the rail lag, and anything that's this wide right here, it looks about 8 pixels wide, um, that, that's, that's counted as a rail. And so if you walk diagonally on a rail, you, you lag really bad. Right here, if you notice my slowdown, it's kind of hard to tell, but um, not only does this, it's really easy to tell right here. This is this is rail lag move speed. This is regular move speed. So it's pretty significant, and there's not so many rails in this game. This is the very first one that you come across in the speed run, and it's really easy to hit diagonal here, because around here you might think, oh, I need to hit diagonal and get around here, but it would just slow you down. So you actually want to go down until your ear is like right about here. And then um, hit left. And that does save four, four frames, four, six frames. So that's that matters. Now what's really tricky about rails is they're actually everywhere in the game. And um, most rails aren't actual rails. They, they just happen to be eight pixels wide. And I'll show you some examples. So here's an interesting one. As you're exiting this room, you want to pump up, and then you seem like you want to hit diagonal to go in here. But these little areas right here actually count as rails. And it's notice it's four pixels of um, purple, and then it's four pixels of black. Well, that still counts as a rail. That's still a rail by the game standards, because it's eight pixels wide. So even though it's like the edge of a staircase. So yeah, if you walk diagonal in here, you actually lag. So. You actually want to pump early, early right here. Like you want to, you want to get your pumps in, your two or three pumps in, right here, so that you're not pumping. Because if you pump on this rail, it'll lag, it'll anti-pump, and then you want to convert into a straight up, like left up, not pump, pump out of the doorway, left up instead of pump all the way on here, pump here as well, and then press up. It's a lot slower, so. This is one of these tricky rails. There's a lot of really tricky rails. I'm going to show you some really crazy examples. This one, almost everybody misses, and it's so easy to miss because after you grab this pot, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You want to throw the pot and then hit diagonal to the next pot, but what happens is if you do that, you lag on this rail right here. So you actually want to go down right here and then hit diagonal. Uh, most people hit diagonal and then they lag. Lose about four frames on this rail. It doesn't do a whole lot, but four frames plus sometimes if you lag, Moldarms will get to you closer. Um, very tricky rail. Most people, most people, completely ignore it. Um, very easy to lose time on. So another really interesting rail that most people don't recognize. It's not in this room. Um, these rails in the middle of the room. Those actually don't count as rails because they're a part of the bl the bricks. So those aren't eight pixels wide, but. Outside of um, that room and all of these mummy entrances, this little divot right here, this actually counts as a rail. And so you actually get rail lag right here. So when you en en enter and exit these, don't exit with them a diagonal. If you exit these, you can actually just hold hold left or right. And then when you cleanly pass it, hit diagonal. So it's very easy to hold diagonal out of here and then lose your four, four or six frames or whatever. And this is this works on both of these entrances. and. It's also really easy to enter these with a diagonal because it's like, oh, well, it's intuitive movement. It makes sense. It's actually really slow. So it's really easy to lose um, 0.3 seconds on Skull Woods just on entering these um, faces, which is really crazy. And if you add that up with all the other bad rail lag right here, lost my four A frames. Another really, really, really interesting rail um, also in Skull Woods. I can almost guarantee you um, everybody misses this one. And, Right here, under the nose of this guy, this is actually counts as a rail right here. Notice the rail lag, right? Because this thing's eight pixels wide, so for some reason this counts as a rail. Uh, <laughs> I can't explain it why. So, actually, what you want to do is walk to your shield. Is about you're about even with this guy's nose, and then hit diagonal. And I did rub on it a little bit there, but the thing about rails is if you rub on it a little bit, you're not really punished. Most people hit diagonal like right here, and it's horrible. This is so bad. You lose so much time. It's a lot easier, but you lose so much time. 
especially playing this game at a high level, he's throwing away time. So another interesting um, rail is actually these pipe entrances. Uh, these pipe entrances do count as rails. So these pipe entrances do actually count as rails, and especially um, next to the big key, that is a big one because you are actually, you directly interact with it, where you don't interact with most of these pipe entrances. You'll never touch them, but when you go to grab the big key, um, you can walk through this, right? That's fine. But if you keep walking, it lags. So so if I end exit this and I hold up and left, um, I'm, I'll, I'll go to the big key. But the problem is, when I hit right about here, you have to let go of that diagonal and then just go cardinally. Um, you can also pump there, but I just lock diagonal. So if you if you hold up left all the way, it does work, but then you do get that real lag. So there is really interesting uh, cryptic rails all all over this game. It's it's about the width here. It's not actually about the, it being a rail or not. Anyway, guys, there's a ton of rails in this game, so make sure to watch out. And if you play and practice this game and watch people play it, look for these rails and look for the lag. It can be kind of hard to tell at first, but Notice there's actually two rails in this room alone. So it's really easy to hit right here and then hit diagonal into the staircase, but it's actually a rail and so you actually want to go past it. And then when you come down here, you want to go cleanly under the bridge and then hit diagonal because the staircase right here also counts as a rail. So even in simple rooms like this, it's really easy to lose critical frames uh, for really no reason. So the next thing I want to talk about is stair lag, and I think most people know what stair lag is. It's one of the very first things people learn. It's pretty interesting, pretty simple mechanic, but there's actually a lot of um, advanced mechanics behind it that not a lot of people know. It affects some rooms pretty heavily, so um, obviously if you hold down coming out of a spiral staircase, you lag, and that's not good. But actually what happens is, so if you move left for one frame you only move one pixel and you're supposed to move two pixels on starting with a two that's not that big of a deal but what it means is that you cancel the lag and so in rooms like this um, it's really important because if you move right for one frame you don't you actually move zero pixels and you're you, since you move zero pixels you're still in stair lag you still have this stair lag. So I moved right, but if I move down, I still lag. So on screens like this one, for example, if you do, if you go right for these whiz rubs, you actually have to move two frames and you only get two pixels out of, you get one pixel, you move two frames, you get one pixel out of that. It's a lot harder um, and, and ends up being a lot slower. And so you can't reliably turn right and then press down, and so you have to go right a lot more than you normally would, which can end up losing a lot of frames. It's actually harder, because if you only go right one frame accidentally, you lose a lot of frames, where if you go left, it's pretty straightforward. So, um, rooms like this, this is pretty important. Right here, it went two frames, and I actually went three pixels. And so, Specifically in this room, um, that's why I go left. That's why a lot of top players go left. If you move too far left, um, you won't hit these guys. You can only hit these guys if you move one frame out of the doorway, which is perfect because of the stair lag. But you can just do a simple diagonal. So if I go one frame left, oh, perfect. That means I can go straight down and this cane will always hit these guys. If you go any amount of number of frames to the right, they'll still hit them but you end up losing a ton of frames uh, for no reason. This comes up a lot in um, in a lot of these stair lag rooms. So for, this is the easiest version of stair lag. So I need to move left for one frame and then it's canceled and then you hit diagonal. It's, it's really easy to do that. And once you get the um, one frame, you're golden. Same here, here, deal here, I'm holding left and I pump. But in rooms like this, you actually have to hold right for two frames and so a lot of times people will cancel a stair lag and then they will they'll still get it um right well that was it's messed up right there i canceled a stair lag by holding right but i didn't actually cancel it because i only moved one pixel now that doesn't come up too often but it definitely starts to come up as you get better and it's pretty important to notice and what it means actually is you don't want to move one frame to the right. And so sometimes people walk half a tile to the right 
and then they actually lose a ton of time because they spend all this time moving to this wall and then they get less diagonal movement where if you can go two frames out of the stair you get way more diagonal movement you end up saving a ton of time and you see this on a lot of screens like palace of darkness big key you see it on hera beetle room and hera beetle room is one another screen where if you get that stair lag well you can mess that screen up you could lose five seconds you could fall you could die in that screen so it ends up being really important to cleanly get the stair lag but then how far because if you get the stair lag right that well i got lucky but sometimes you don't get lucky oh yeah also um here's another really interesting example of rail lag so if i'm hauling up here and there's this popo and i try to throw the pot at him so I actually want to, you want to release the pot super early because what happens is you'll, you'll lag on this rail. So what a lot of people do is walk past the rail and then throw it up. In practice, I found it's faster to just glide along the hole, throw it. So then you land it right about here and then you're fine. But another really interesting rail that um, uh, can, or will, will, you will lose frames on it. So here is an interesting door mechanic and what you want to do is hold down and right until you open this door and then don't keep holding down and right as I was talking about earlier you'll get this weird lag let go of and hold down and then hit right and I thought this was especially interesting it, it never comes up if you just hold out of the door you get an 1812 if you hold diagonal out of the door you actually lose a frame this is because this is actually a bastard door now it's one of the more trivial bastard doors because um, you you would dash out of this door, this room anyway, so you you never you never come up. But sometimes um, people like to go diagonal out of it. Uh, for I I used to. There's there's no gain. Dashing's faster, and if you're dashing, you never actually you never you never hold be holy diagonal. But as you're going into the door, also don't be holding diagonal. Now it's just an interesting little thing. It never really comes up. So another one of these door opening mechanics where you want to walk into the door, let it open, and then turn um, is. In, in landmo and it seems like you want to pump to the door like wouldn't that be faster but it ends up being about the same and oftentimes pumping is harder oftentimes you lose frames because you mess up best case you save a frame but it's it's not worth it and a lot of the reason for this is because when you open the door it resets your movement and so you get a two and then when you press up you get another one so while you're pumping that's great you by opening the door you get a pump anyway so you don't really get a whole lot out of you don't really get a whole lot out of pumping from here to the door it's almost always just better to walk into the door and you, you can see this in um a few other spots in the game so let's say you do circle pots and you're facing down here and you can't snap into the door because you're not facing to the right well this is really interesting because most people try to line up exactly with the door and then go into it, get a clean berth into the door, but that's actually, there's a slightly more interest, better way to do this. So if you go directly in the door at 4428, that's optimal. If you're slightly above the door though, say I get a 24. If I'm below the door, I get a 33. So I lost nine frames by going slightly below the door versus going slightly above the door. That's a 25, and I mean, I'm gonna try to get an optimal time in the middle of the door. 23, so I got my 23 optimal middle of the door. I'm halfway above the door and I get a 27. You know, four frames isn't that bad for being that far out. Um, and But this is, it's more crazy. If, if you're super far under the door, you actually lose like 32. So I lost nine frames for being barely under the door. 33, I lost 10 frames for you barely under the door. When, if you're halfway above the door, you only lose two. So, I mean, if you if you think about this, there's no real mechanic here, but it's it's so obvious. Now, that one was really bad, but um, I think that's an anomaly. I think I messed up. You can actually see how bad it is to enter the door from anywhere even below it. I'm trying to enter the door as high as I can. I'm getting, the worst thing getting is 28. They're, okay, I got a 30. I barely touched the door and I get a 29. If I go barely barely below the door, it's worse than it. So this is actually worse than this. This is, is the same or better than this. 
you want to enter the door like right here and this this is loses 10 frames so and this is the same so what what's what should you do here you should enter the door about right here um don't go for a middle of the door enter it like above the door i like to look at my ears right next to this line of the door that's what i do and notice i got a 25 that's really clean 24 i mean these are near perfect times very consistent i accidentally went too low and i got a perfect time like this is really good i got a 26 oh well 24 if you go because if you try to get perfect in 27 oh no and that was one pixel below 30 that's like two pixels below 36 and if you want to see how really bad it is 43 like what the hell if you enter it really high again 27 that's really not that bad so all of you from here all the way down to here is a three frame variance and then every pixel you go under you start to lose three or four frames now the reason this is is because what happens is you you lose time for going below the door and then you lose even more time for readjusting and nudging back into the door when you normally hit the door right here you only lose time for nudging in the door and the time you lose for nudging in the door you walk you're still walking right so you you walk slightly less than if you were normally walking so you actually only end up losing like three or four frames um not a big deal I lost two frames on that you know, not a big deal where if you go below the door you lose a bunch for going too far below the door but then you have to nudge all the all the time that you spent going below the door now you have to nudge it back into the door so you end up losing three times as many frames as you normally would have lost um, instead of three frames more and this is very consistent throughout the game and you can save a significant amount of time in runs by opening doors super early um, not even opening them properly just open them super early um, this doesn't work if you're going diagonal because diagonal mechanics are slightly different but um you have to be you have to be flush with the wall so it, here's another really good example you could snap into the door now if you snap into the door that's great but if you, if you are pumping um and you want to cancel your dash actually it's it's a lot better to cancel it like right here this is this is optimal let's see let's compare let's compare super early you got an 806 kind of late 813 one frame 806 right 804 805 so 803 is probably the best directly in the middle or one frame before the middle um super early 806 it's you know barely punishing 807 that's not that bad for how early that is and how easy that is go slightly beyond 816 and now you're starting to lose real time 819 even one frame past it 811 okay i never got an 811 no matter how early i opened the door starting to lose a lot of time for trivial mechanic um, and this is kind of the reason that when you do Lamo and you open this door right here, it's better to walk into the door, open it, and then snap into the entranceway um, versus trying to pump. Because if you pump too far, you end up losing a lot of time for absolutely no reason. There's a pretty similar mechanic for dashing. So for example, if you're doing bumper skip and you want to get the perfect dash, while the perfect dash is great, if you stop your dash really early and then do a diagonal, it's almost the same as a perfect dash. So, to, and if you dash too far, you end up losing a lot of time. So let's do some examples. 2750 has a very good dash. 2751, do you see how it's early I stopped? I mean, you were talking about like the orange brick. 2754, that, was, that wasn't even a real trial. 2749, that was better than, than walking up. Another 2750, I mean, these, these numbers are incredibly close to getting a perfect stop incredibly close and it's the same thing if you dash too far you end up losing like five ten frames you know 2758 starts to add up 2756 you know i never got even close to 56 2755 i did barely even dash too far there so optimally it's not really dashing to the door isn't really hell of the goal here it's it's more like dash early and then adjust your dash with the diagonal um, is, is way superior, far superior than trying to hit the door. Because if you dash too far, you lose five, six frames. Where if you dash right here and walk diagonal, it's the same. So I think everybody knows about key dashing. There's some pretty interesting key dashes. So I'm actually on a key dash pixel here, and that's because I was lined up with this torch. Everything in this game is on a four pixel um, grid. 
every physical object. So as long as you touch a physical object at some point, you actually are on a key dash pixel. So because you rub against this torch, press up, I'm still on a key dash pixel, which means you'll get the key dash. You can alternatively dash on this wall right here. Still counts as a key dash. So um, most key dashes in this game, they're a part of a, they're part of a script. Every single runner does it, everyone knows about it, so it's it's nothing too extreme. If you don't know how, how to key dash or what key dashes are, don't worry about it because you'll learn it. But um, there's a few key dashes in the game that there's actually no uh, plan, there's no plan for. And this is one of them where you literally just have to memorize the working pixels. Um, this is one of them, Aghanim's Tower going up into the Red Knights right after the maze, or right after the bridge maze. That That's another one. You just have to memorize it, and this one is okay. If you notice right here, it's really hard to tell my Amorak. Right here, there's a single pixel. So if there's a single pixel, um, you can see when you start your dash, you'll get a key dash. Alternatively, if um, you're four frames above that, so I'm not actually sure. But I think this is also a key dash pixel. It's, it's really hard to tell. Um, and a lot of people don't go for it for that reason. But um, this is, yeah, that's also a working key dash pixel. There's some really interesting key dashes like in Turtle Rock. So there's 16 RNGs in this room. And if you get the best RNG, then um, you can skip the roller cycle, which is really good. But what that does is it means this guy, yeah, so the roller is exiting. If you get the best RNG or the two worst RNGs, it means when you enter this room, this roller is actually leaving you. And if that's the case, you can actually dash and then dash again, and you get a key dash. And this works because, well, you're lined up with this four pixel thing from um, the entrance. And so you press left, you're still on the entrance. So it's pretty, you can, you can also walk for it, but I found dashing to be faster. Neat little trick there. It saves a few frames over the regular strat. So I was talking about bastard doors earlier, and this is a good exercise, just this door in general. There's two ways to approach this door. One, you can just walk diagonal and try to snap into the door. And then the other one is try to pump and then just enter the door really early. And you'll get similar results. I find pumping's better, um, but the snap might be better. Now this is interesting actually because you don't, this is not a bastard door, not all key doors facing left and right are bastard doors, but every key door facing left, you actually don't want to pump in. For some reason, it anti-pumps you. So, in this key door, you actually don't pump, you just hold left. Now I got a 2357, 2358 for pumping, 2358, 2357. So it's not that punishing, but there's and there's only a few doors like this in the game, but um, it does lose time and there's no reward and it's easier to just hold left. Now the thing is it actually alternates um, eight pixels of, I think it's eight or 16 eight, eight pixels of um, anti-pumping and then pumping and then anti-pumping. So what happens is actually in a task, you would pump in this door on those good pixels and just not pump on the bad pixels. Um, but in a real time environment, just hold left. And it's every key door facing left that you walk through. There's only a few. This one, there's one in Thieves. Uh, I think there's one in Ganon's Tower. There is one in Swamp before going to the Switch room. So there's not too many, but um, it is it does, it does add up. It is free frames. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys all learned how to enter doors in Link to Pass properly. And you're going to see a huge improvement in your runs, in your gold splits, in your attempts. Even when you reset, your runs are gonna be 10 times better and be like, wow, I need to do another run right now because that was so good and I can easily PB. I can easily get great times in this game. It really is anything anybody can do this. You know, if you're playing randomizer, your randomizer times are gonna go down. When we're talking minutes, sounds like four or five frames doesn't sound like a lot. You guys are losing minutes on bad door movement, just door movement losing whole minutes and it's over the whole game this stuff really adds up and even if you're just playing casually for fun this stuff's really cool in order to you know show off learn some stuff about the game learn some movement mechanics there are so many movement mechanics in like the past when you 
start to learn it, start to see really the mechanics and the depth behind it. Um, it gets pretty interesting. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys later. And if you guys like this type of content, make sure to shoot me a like, shoot me a subscribe so that I know to make more videos like this because I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun telling you guys exactly how to uh, walk into a door and make sure you guys stay dully cued in. I'll see you guys next time.